Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the Sabin-Feldman dye test. So this is a, a test with a type of dye that allows uh, a doctor to diagnose toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis before it's caused by the eukaryotic parasite Toxoplasma gondii. The cat is actually its final or definitive hosts, but humans can be intermediate hosts for this parasite. Um, if you ever heard uh, a doctor or anyone else say that a pregnant woman should not clean out the litter box, this is why. Because if the cat has Toxoplasma gondii, then it is shedding cells in its feces, and then if the pregnant woman um, gets those into her body and she gets toxoplasmosis, it can cause um, problems with her fetus, so things like mental retardation, um, even spontaneous miscarriage. And so um, that's maybe something you would have heard of before. But the Sabin-Feldman dye test is a pretty quick method for determining if somebody has either a current or past infection of toxoplasmosis. It's a quantitative test, meaning that an antibody titer, how many antibodies are floating around in the blood to this pathogen, that can be determined quantitatively. It's also quite sensitive. Um, as little as two IU um, of the antibodies per milliliter of blood can be um, measured this way, which is um, quite, a, quite a sensitive type of test. It's also a kind of serologic test. Serologic just means that it diagnoses the presence of antibodies in the serum of the patient. So basically, if a person gets infected with the toxoplasma parasite, their immune system will generate antibodies that will recognize it and try to fight that infection. And this test recognizes whether or not those antibodies are, are present and how many of them are present. It does require live tachozoites. Tachozoites are one of the cellular life stages of the toxoplasma parasite. So this does make it a little bit um, dangerous, meaning that any kind of medical worker who's carrying out this test on a patient's serum to see if that serum has antibodies, they will have to use these live tachozoites, which means that they could potentially get infected with toxoplasma themselves if they weren't um, following sort of strict protocol to protect themselves. So there is kind of a, a danger factor there. It also, this um, test detects a certain kind of antibody. If you have studied antibodies before, you know that there are different types of antibodies. And the one that this one detects is IgG or immunoglobulin G. This means that it can't distinguish between current and past infections because people can have IgG if they're currently infected with, with toxoplasma, if they have like a, um, you know, an ongoing toxoplasmosis infection, but they can also have IgG circulating in their blood if they were previously infected by toxoplasma, toxoplasma but are no longer infected because their immune system has taken care of it. <clears throat> So it can't distinguish between current and past infection. It can just distinguish between whether or not somebody has had the infection at some point, whether it's now or in the past. Of course, doctors would then look at other things like symptoms to guess at whether or not um, the, the infection is current or past. Also, they would look at the amount of antibodies present. So how does this work? Well, it uses a dye, as you can tell from its name. And the way it works is if antibodies are present, so if these antibodies are in the serum, um, then IgG activates proteins known as complement proteins that are part of the normal immune system. And this results in parasite membrane lysis. So if you know something about complement, you know that there's a complement protein cascade where they're all signaling to each other. And this results in the formation of something called a membrane attack complex when the complement proteins actually basically punch a hole in the membrane that the antibodies recognize. <clears throat> so if you've got antibodies that can recognize these tachozoites, then those will bind to the tachozoite, the complement will recognize the antibodies that are bound to the tachozoite and then form that membrane attack complex, poke a hole, um, lyse the, the parasite membrane. And this is the critical part, because the antibodies are present, 
to and form the complement to splice the membrane, then that membrane, that parasite, does not take up the dye in the test because it's got holes in the membrane, so the dye will just leak out again. This leaves the tachyzoites being thin because they've been lysed and they're dead, and also colorless. So this is considered a positive result. Positive result because the antibodies were present, and that is why the tachyzoites are dead and therefore colorless. If antibodies are absent, meaning that the serum that's being tested doesn't have any antibodies that recognize the tachyzoites, then the complement um, proteins will not form their membrane attack complex, there won't be any cell lysis, so the cells remain intact, and therefore they can take up the dye that's used in this test. And so this results in cells that are um, sort of thicker, not thin because they're not dead, but also blue because they've taken up this blue dye. And that's considered a negative result, negative because there were no antibodies present. The antibodies were absent. This means that the person whose serum is being tested, they are not now, nor have they ever been infected with toxoplasma. So now let's look at the procedure in more detail. You take the live tachyzoites. Remember I said that's why it would be a little dangerous for the medical personnel. They really have to make sure they were wearing their personal protective equipment and um, carrying out these steps in a way that keeps the tachyzoites from being able to enter their body. <clears throat> so you mix the live tachyzoites with the test serum. This is the serum from the person who's being screened to see if they have these antibodies to toxoplasma. Then you add complement protein. Remember that the complement protein, it's the one that forms the membrane attack complex and lyses the cell if antibodies are present in the serum. And this complement protein actually has to come from negative serum. What we mean by that is you have to um, get serum from somebody that has been tested negative for this before. So you know that that person does not have toxoplasma antibodies in their serum. That way, if you get a positive result saying that antibodies are present, you know they had to be in the test serum from the person who's being tested. But you still have to have complement present so that if antibodies are also present, you get the membrane attack complex and the, and the parasite lysis. Um, but you have to make sure that, that complement protein is coming from serum that doesn't have antibodies to toxoplasma itself. Then you incubate and then add methylene blue dye. The methylene blue dye is the dye that if the parasite cells remain intact because there's no antibodies in the test serum, then you get blue cells it's from that methylene blue dye. So after adding the dye, you incubate again, about an hour, human body temperature, it doesn't take a, a long time. And then you're gonna look in a microscope and find the tachyzoites um, in the mixture and count how many of them are blue and how many of them are thin and colorless. Once you have counted several of them, um, you can then calculate the percentage that are colorless. So you would count a large number of tachyzoites, how many were blue, how many were colorless, keep, keep track of that, add them together to get the total amount, take the number that were colorless, divide by the total amount, and then you've got the percentage that are colorless. Then you have to interpret the results. So what I didn't mention before is that when you're mixing the, the tachyzoites with the test serum, you're typically doing this many, many times with dilutions of the test serum. So you've got the serum and then you did serial dilutions. So making it more and more and more dilute and you've got um, a line of test tubes with a line of serially diluted serum where with each dilution, um, the amount of antibodies that would be present is gonna get less and less. So you test all of those different dilutions and then the dilution of test serum at which 50% of the tachyzoites are colorless, that actually gives you the antibody titer for that test serum. So it tells you not just that there are antibodies present, but how many antibodies are present. <clears throat> and so that gives you the antibody titer. That's why we said earlier that it was a quantitative technique. If antibodies are absent, so meaning no antibodies to recognize the tachyzoites, so complement protein isn't activated to kill the parasites, 
So those cells um, are, are all blue. So if the antibodies are absent, you're going to expect 90 to 100% of the tachyzoites to be blue. So you might be wondering, why not 100? Why, if 90% of the tachyzoites are blue, why is that enough to say that there was no, that there were no antibodies? Well, it's because the tachyzoites themselves, they could end up being, um, being killed just from being, for, for, for sort of reasons other than the antibodies being present. So maybe some of, you know, 10% of the tachyzoites may not have been, um, might not have been healthy. Maybe they are older and so their membranes are weaker um, anyway. And so the membranes would lice, not because antibodies were present, but just because the cells were old or damaged in some way. And so that's why you could get um, a small percentage of tachyzoites that will be blue, even if the overwhelming majority are um, thin and colorless. Uh, and so as long as you've got um, sort of 90 plus percent or more are blue, that tells you that um, you can assume that the antibodies are absent and that that person does not have a toxoplasma uh, infection. So it does not have toxoplasmosis. So that is it for today. If you're interested in learning more about antibody structure and function, you can check out my video about antibodies. But that's it for today, and thanks for watching Biology Professor.